After a rough 2019, Seth Rollins has once again established himself as one of the elite wrestlers in WWE. It's not like he wasn't in 2019, but a lot of negativity surrounded him to the point where it was necessary to have a clean start. And now it's the contrary, almost everyone loves him. Obviously there's gonna be some people that dislike him, but you know, the most part, Rollins is loved. He's probably the best wrestler in the entire WWE right now, and this is despite him being the biggest loser. So how did it go down? Well, we gotta go back to 2016. After recovering from an ACL Terra for about 6 months, the fans were anxiously awaiting Seth Rollins' return. Personally, he was one of my favorites despite having the chicken heel booking, as he had this ability to draw you into his matches with ease. I mean, my favorite match of the 2010s, my favorite WWE match, is probably John Cena vs Seth Rollins at SummerSlam, and this is despite a finish that's stupider than December to this member 2006. It also helps that he was entertaining outside the ring as well. A lot of us were ready to cheer for him, hell a bunch of us were cheering him already, and upon his return, He's still a heel, even though at this point he wasn't really hated. Time goes on, three months later he turns face after the summer and rebuilds his character feeling that he deserved to pay for his sins. Time goes on, he's IC champion, Monday night Rollins is in full effect and he carried. He carried Raw in 2018, in a world full of questionable storylines that included sisters, gas masks, factions that will make you look the other way, Rollins was a beacon of light. His impressive performances with the likes of Dolph Ziggler were a sight and it was clear by the end of the year that a world title run was on the horizon. It was not only Raw's workhorse, but WWE's as well. He gets his moment at WrestleMania 35, and I was happy to see him at the pinnacle of WWE. It took him a while to get back to the top. I was thinking this was going to be a great run. He has the AJ Styles match, and it was truly amazing. One of the best matches of 2019. And at this point, I'm like, oh, I think this run is going to be good. But I and a bunch of you thought wrong. Now off screen, Rollins was basically trying to be the leader of the company. He was really trying hard in this area and it rubbed a lot of others the wrong way. Usually when Roman Reigns and John Cena talk and promote the product, they don't really throw insults that often. Sure, Roman Reigns might do something here and there, but for the most part, they're straightforward. Rollins though was saying some very odd stuff. He said that he had more money in the bank than Will Ospreay and it was a weird time because he was the face of the company essentially saying some random things. Obviously, some of it is blown out of proportion, like him saying WWE is the best company or whatever. I mean, what do you expect him to say? He's holding that WWE title in his arm. It wasn't a good look for Rollins, and on the other side, he wasn't lighting the world on fire with his performances. You know, he went from AJ Styles to Baron Corbin. And the worst of all was the Becky Lynch pairing. It was awkward and very dumb, and the heat Rollins' head was gone, and if anything, it was all negative now. Even then, he won the fans over at SummerSlam. In Toronto, a rabid crowd that was booing the life out of him, he put in this world-class performance that silenced all the haters, and for me that night, he took it to a different level. That's nice and all, but on the other side emerged the hottest character in WWE. Easily. This man had one match to his name, but it was more than enough for the crowd to support him. I'm talking about the fiend, Bray Wyatt. After WrestleMania 35, Bray Wyatt slowly developed this dark character who was using a kid's show as a means to reach others and inform them of his Arrival. That he that I'm referring to is of course The Fiend. He comes out at SummerSlam, has one of the most jaw-dropping entrances, a ridiculous entrance, an entrance that I feel is one of the best in recent years. He's selling merch, making money, and the first thing they do is have him go for the title. A title held by a man who tried his best to win over the crowd, and even if the title was held by Roman Reigns or John Cena, it just wasn't right to have him go for it so soon. And if you ask that crowd at the time, hey, Seth Rounds, or The Fiend. I think it's an easy choice. Seth Rollins wouldn't choose himself if it came down to it. I mean, with the way the story was going, there was only one choice. The Fiend as the champion. They shouldn't have done it at the first place, but that's what they gotta do now, right? Worst of all though was the Hell in a Cell match. So after weeks of Rollins being scared out of his mind, he decides to lash out and show fury and anger in the worst way possible. But not only does he not win the match, it ends in a DQ. The match in the first place wasn't even good. Story-wise, it makes sense for Rollins to go crazy. I mean, he's gonna sit down and let this man dominate him, but the execution left a lot to be desired. The red lighting was horrible, and with this, Rounds was basically a heel to the crowd. His face run was ruined despite being somewhat fixed at SummerSlam. The recovering babyface was now a hated heel for something he wasn't even involved with. I mean, he wasn't even the one who booked the match. And I recall Rollins actually said that he was ready to fight Vince for this. So they tried to rectify this by having him lose the title after aggressively going after The Fiend. His aggression proved to be his downfall and The Fiend basically exposed him for what he truly was and this would intensify over the next couple of weeks. After Rollins and Team Raw failed to win at Survivor Series, he started criticizing the locker room and sounded so irritating. Oh, you guys didn't do well. I'm a leader, da da da. And at this point, it was clear what was happening, and before you knew it, Kevin Owens was right about Seth. He was out here trying to satisfy others like the company instead of being his own person, and all this has done is turn him into a whiny, miserable prick. After trying to be the better man and complaining about doing the right things, Seth Rollins showed his true colors. He had a secret partnership with the AOP, but after these turn of events, he decided to screw it and admitted that the things Owens said about him were true. For one, his actions confirmed it, but he also said it himself. He was talking about how he was doing everything right. Zero nights off, wrestling with injuries, he was giving it his all, 
yet they didn't appreciate it. It was basic, you people did this, da da da. Except for this one, it made sense. Because Seth Rollins, he was working extremely hard. There's no doubt about it. Even though some of the stuff he was doing was bizarre, he was working extremely hard. He had great matches night in, night out. Even some of the Baron Corbin matches were decent, but the booking ruined him. He also said that fiction turned into fact. The fans is fiction. The fact that Rounds was this type of person turned out to be true. I remember during this time period, Rounds in the 365 documentary was so upset with how things turned feeling that he was trying his best, but people hated him. At the same time, he was constantly reminding everyone that he was a leader. A true leader, unlike others such as Kevin Owens. And basically, he had a vision. AOP were there to help him force everyone to see the light. Enter the Messiah. It was clear that Rounds was so disconnected from the crowd, but felt that his path was the right way. You know, he was trying to lead everyone into his path. And it was as he used to say, for the greater good. Beating his opponent, greater good. Murphy joining him, for the greater good. Rounds perceived himself to be the savior of Monday nights. And it was slowly developing for months, but now he was a full-on cult leader. At least that's what it looked like. Others were throwing themselves for him, whether it was referees or Austin Theory. In other places, he was preaching his message, holding sermons, and he had some followers. But the story itself could have been way more than it was. He was slowly working on the presentation, changing his music, started wearing suits, the whole man bun, the glove that made him look like the ultimate final boss of Raw. But unfortunately, though, with these changes, other things were hurting this new faction. For one... Rizar suffered an injury and both him and Akam were sidelined. This left Murphy as the only follower, but luckily for Rollins, this didn't really ruin his summer. He became more vicious after Becky Lynch was having a baby and destroyed Rey Mysterio's eye, all for the greater good. Character-wise and in-ring-wise, Seth was doing great, but you just feel there could have been more with this iteration of his character. Perhaps the timekeeper being a follower of his, somebody in a position of power feeling that he's the one to lead Raw. It wasn't that what was decent. It's somewhat underwhelming. The fact that there wasn't any crowds, his guys getting removed out of the group for some very random reasons, the whole Mysterio arc lasting several months and through two shows hurt him. All these things hurt him. It just didn't click properly and Rounds by the end of the year had no followers. So he decided to sacrifice himself for the greater good. And upon his return, he was a father and things were very different. Just when it seemed like Rounds was going to have a change of heart and turn into a better person, he realized that he should be the leader of SmackDown and make the show greater. The wrestlers were like, not this again, and lost interest like some fans lose interest in a new champion. Cesaro was the last man remaining, and Rollins was greatly offended after he walked away. He was all about others embracing his vision, and he saw Cesaro. He wanted Cesaro to realize that his way is the right way. This leads to a match at WrestleMania, which I thought was good, and showed maybe they want to do more with Cesaro. This loss also caused Rollins to develop his current character. The visionary, or joker, or crazy guy, whatever the hell you want to call him. Now before WrestleMania, Rollins' attires stood out. But afterwards, he was wildin'. Usually, he had some sort of train of thought, but now he had new entrance, danced his way to the ring, had this very odd cackle left that he would try often. He had a higher pitched voice now, which was goofy and hilarious at times. And who can forget the outfits? Everything about him is outlandish and outrageous, and that's what makes it entertaining. He had an amazing program with Edge over the summer, which intensified with every match. Edge tried matching his craziness by channeling his dark side and striking back against Rollins' mind games with his own. And they delivered in every match. Whether it was SummerSlam, the SmackDown match, or the final match in the feud, the culmination of the feud, with the Hell in a Cell match, which was clearly the best match in the feud. There was some great storytelling throughout the feud, and even though Rollins lost, he was not affected negatively in the slightest. He formed a partnership with Kevin Owens and became the most over wrestler on Raw, and it was the right moment for him to win the title. And if the rumors are believed, the title was his, but Roman got sick and they changed plans. Even then, he has this great program with him where he was constantly outsmarting him, showing him who's boss, and it was a creative story because Roman was constantly confident, talking about how he's a tribal chief. Acknowledge me, this and that, and this man tries casting doubts, and even in the match, it showed. It showed that Roman was not the same man that he usually was when he's facing Seth Rollins. Once again, it was a great opportunity for something special to occur at the Raw Rumble, but it is what it is. Luckily, we got the Cody Rhodes program out of it. Even though he took an L in every single match, Rollins was not affected, and if anything, it's for the greater good. It's to establish Cody Rhodes as a bigger star in WWE. Rollins has to get credit for helping elevate him. It's not like Cody wasn't a notable talent before, but this feud was really important to let everyone know that he was one of the best in the company. And plus, he's the one that took him out on Monday, so there's that. Overall, Seth Rollins might be the biggest loser at the top of WWE, but this has not hurt him. His ability to slowly transition his character over the years allows him to be fresh, coupled with his improved mic skills, the fact that he makes everyone look better from Kevin Owens to Cody Rhodes, and outstanding performances in the ring makes him one of WWE's most reliable and, of course, best wrestlers in the company. I just feel that he should be rewarded with the title because he, he deserves it. He's one of the most deserving wrestlers on the entire roster. Maybe, just maybe, he's going to win money in the bank. Who knows? 
But yeah, Rollins, he's one of the best. And I'm glad to see that he rebuilt himself after that horrible 2019 where everyone was hating on him, even though he's having good performances and the whole odd booking stuff. It was just a bad year for him. I'm glad to see that he's recovered and doing well now. So yeah. All right, what'd you guys think of Seth Rollins' transition from architect to visionary? Please comment down below. And that's it for this video. Make sure you hit the super kick on the like button and perhaps the curb stomp on the subscribe button. Peace. I'm out.